It was in the early hours of September 1st, 1939, that the Second World War broke out. And in that catastrophe, aviation, by now 30 years old, was to become, sadly enough, the staunch ally of death. Flying techniques had progressed to a point where the air arm was often to prove a deciding factor. And behind those battling squadrons lay all the experience that had previously been gained by civil aviation. On the other hand, the war brought with it a wealth of experience, which it would have needed a much longer period to acquire in peacetime. And this was to the great benefit of aviation, which was now able to apply new techniques to the advantage of the civil sector. For instance, even before the war ended, the limitations of the old piston engine were widely recognized. This led to the adoption of the jet engine, which had been designed and tried out in previous years, but had not yet been put to practical use. Another sector to develop enormously in wartime and to the subsequent advantage of civil aviation was aircraft instrumentation. Because of the great contribution it has made to flight safety, RADA undoubtedly has a place among the major benefits that science has given to mankind. And greater safety has meant that aviation now influences, conditions and even determines certain aspects of civil life. Take helicopters. They have been brought to such a pitch of perfection that they are almost unrivaled in many branches of flying. Today, flying is said to be within everyone's reach. In some countries, people have learned to use aeroplanes before knowing how to ride a bicycle. We fly for purposes of work, for pleasure, or just for the joy of being airborne. Air tourism is becoming increasingly widespread, and in Alaska and parts of Africa, the aeroplane is used in much the same way as a car. In fact, in those countries, certain journeys can only be made by air. As in the early days, many of the best pilots started flying as a hobby. And it is a hobby that is becoming increasingly popular. With modern technology what it is, there is no limit to the imagination where flying is concerned. Having long since shed their propellers, airplanes with swept back wings now look more and more like rockets. And it is here that the future of aviation lies. The race to be first in the field, to do better than last time round, goes on unchecked. New planes of vast size transport their passengers and freight at speeds that no one dreamed of until a few years ago. This has made it possible to reduce the cost of air travel, to give, as it were, a new dimension to our way of life. It is by these means that economic barriers which have stood in the way of contacts between the peoples of one continent and another can be abolished. What then? Commercial missiles? Giant rockets taking hundreds of passengers to any part of the world in a matter of minutes? Man's dream, prompted by watching birds in flight, has become a reality. Man too can soar aloft. He too is master of the skies of limitless space, offering as never before a vast training ground in which to prepare for new ventures, new conquests. <laughs>